Hey you guys, welcome back. Sorry it's taking me so long to film this. Um, I already filmed it and my battery died when I was almost done, so here it is. This has been my go-to look. Actually, I actually have a couple, so I'm gonna be filming another one next time, but for those of you who are new, I'm Erin, I am a mom of two. I have a stepdaughter who is gonna be four tomorrow and a nine month old. I um, was a professional makeup artist for about 10 years, um, working for two major brands. But um, this is my go-to, like I said, combination you guys have been asking to see on my Instagram. So if you wanna see any other videos, I promise I'll be better about filming them. Just uh, comment what you guys wanna see and I will film it for you. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with doing my brows. This is the Anastasia Brow Definer in the shade Soft Brown. It's got a little spoolie on one end and a uh, angled kind of definer on the other end. Similar to the Charlotte Tilbury one that I was using, but the color payoff is a little bit different. I'm not sure if I'm too obsessed with it, but I just like to start going right underneath and kind of brushing the hairs up. and then kind of brushing it through with this little leaf. You can see, so it softens it up quite a bit. And I'm just gonna go with the natural shape of my brow. I don't know if I've told you guys before, but I don't get my brows done. I've actually, my hair wasn't really growing until recently because of my pregnancy. So I definitely haven't needed to get them done. So far the formula of this though I like, it's just the color payoff is a little bit more intense. So I might just go with a lighter shade but the wear time is nice, it stays on, it doesn't, it doesn't really budge, so. Just like so. Okay, so they look pretty balanced to me. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take my concealer, go right underneath to kind of carve it out. And I'm gonna be using a flat synthetic brush. This one is the 247 from MAC. Um, with the flat synthetic brushes like that, I feel like you can get away with using more reasonably priced ones. Um, It's the blending brushes that I feel like are a little bit more important to have like really higher quality. Um, but anyways, the concealer I'm gonna be using is the Shape Tape from Tarte. I just bought this. The shade is not good for me at all. Um, my self tanner kind of just wore off, so it's not the best color, but this shade is medium. I typically like my under eye concealer to be a little bit more in the warm tone, so more pink, uh, because it cancels out more of that green vein underneath the eye. But I am gonna mix it today because that color, like I said, is off a little bit with my, um, this is the Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer and the shade is nude, which is a little bit light for me. So mixing them together will be just fine. And that way I also save product because I'm sure the Shape Tape concealer will be a little bit better when I'm darker in the summer. So I'm gonna go right underneath. This also just um, covers up all the little hairs that I have from being too lazy to get them done and or pluck. And I'm just gonna pull it down onto my eyelid now. Just like that. I'm gonna go in with um, the eyeshadow base I'm gonna to use today is MAC's um, Pro Longwear Paint Pot. I don't know the exact uh, claim, like the wear time anymore, I don't remember. I don't know if it's like 12 hours, 16 hours, something like that, but um, it definitely creates a nice uh, barrier for your shadow. And it also keeps it on. I can also say that the wear time on that is really good too. 
because my makeup definitely has to stay on all day, especially from chasing around little kids and having them always touching my face. So, brows are looking pretty good. I'm gonna use another flat synthetic brush. This is the 252, just a little bit larger flat synthetic brush. A little product goes a long way. It looks like this. The shade is called Laying Low. So again, this is the Max um, Pro Longwear Paint Pot. And I'm just going to place this right on the lid. I'm gonna bring it on the bottom too, just because it also creates a nice barrier. Um, and I like to often put shadow underneath and eyeliner, so it kind of just keeps it in place and creates uh, something for my shadow to stick to. Just like that. All right, the palette that I'm gonna use today is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. Um, I like this one because um, the Morphe shadows have good color payoff, but I just like whatever's quick and easy. Um, and since this palette is all in one and they're all the colors that I really enjoy working with, they're all a little bit more warmer. I'll show you guys the palette looks like this. I'm gonna go in with the shade Rush, which is this orangier shade, and I'm gonna be using a fluffy blending brush. This is um, the MAC 224. I'm gonna go right above my crease. A little product goes a long way. I have noticed that if you use a ton at a time, sometimes it kind of skips and it's not super smooth, which is also why it's important to use an eyeshadow base because it kind of helps um, everything blend nicely onto the skin. Again. Going right in. So I'm not quite going all the way up to my um, brow here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This has been my go-to for a little while now, just because like I said, it's super easy. It's all, all together that the shades I like. Um, I was just drawn to the palette because uh, because of the colors. I don't particularly, I don't know too much about Morphe, to be honest, or um, Jaclyn Hill. I know that she's obviously a makeup artist, but I strictly just like the, the colors here, and I thought I would give it a try and actually fell in love with it because it was so cheap, and I was like, oh my goodness. And I always like to try new things. Um, as you guys know, I've worked for Charlotte and uh, Charlotte Tilbury and Max, so I have a lot of their stuff, and I'm very familiar with that, but I like to kind of try new things. Anyways, so now I'm going to be using the 252, 242. It's a small synthetic brush again, and I'm going to be using the color Rush, which is this kind of deeper tone, deeper orange tone, and I'm going to bring this just right onto my lid here, and I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. I don't like to do a ton of liner anymore because I have, um, top eyeliner anyways, because I have my false... Um, or my lash extensions and it's uh, kind of rough on them sometimes when I'm rubbing the um, liner out of there so I like to keep them looking fresh because I don't have time to get them done as often as I want and I'm going to take the same um, oh it's not called brush did I say rush I don't know boom is what it's called I don't know if I said that but um, going right underneath the bottom here. So I filmed this video yesterday, you guys, and my camera died when I was basically done. So I am here doing it again, which is fine because I do my makeup every day. Okay, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using a uh, blending brush. This one's a bit dirty, sorry. I used it yesterday. Um, the MAC 217. Again, the cleaner your brushes are, the, you know, the more the longevity is going to be there for um, for the little for your brushes. Sorry, I can't talk. It's super early still. Um, anyways, I'm going to go in with Mugshot, which is this guy right here, and just kind of bring this into the crease and um, in between both my lid color and my um, contour color. Just go back and forth. But yeah, the better and the the more clean you keep your brushes because a lot of times, well, this one's real hair because it's an older um, 217. They transitioned all their brushes to synthetic, but um, even so, like just think about your hair. Like if you were never to wash it, it would start breaking and all that fun stuff and especially like leaving a bunch of product in it. So 
so if you want your brushes to work the best and to last the longest you definitely want to keep them clean don't take notes from me because I don't keep them very clean because I have so many to work with <clears throat> So just like that, I feel like I want to buff it out even more. So I'm going to go back in with my 224 and that rush color, which is the lighter orange. And I'm going to go kind of right on top and just do little circles and bring it up. If I wanted my eyes to be um, super uplifting, like if I, my eye shape was a little bit more descending, um, which would mean the corners kind of downturn here, I would bring the darker, a darker eyeshadow. I'm gonna pull it up top because that's gonna uplift the eyes. My eyes are naturally more almond shaped, so um, I'm just kind of going with my the shape of my eye, but that's just a little trick if your eyes were a little bit more descending. Okay, just like so. I'm gonna take boom again, this guy, and do some right in here. Just like that okay the next thing I'm gonna do there is a little bit of fallout which is why I've not done my skin yet um, but I'm gonna use max eye coal and Costa reach it's like a red brown um, but I like their eye coals because they go on super smooth they're blendable so you can put shadow right on top and they will move with the shadow and also the eyeshadow kind of sets them in place so it doesn't go anywhere because like I said my makeup definitely has to stay on all day um, and not move because I have little kids and I don't have time to touch up my makeup throughout the day so I'm gonna put it in my waterline just because I want it a little bit more intense I'm not going all the way to my tear duct just kind of towards center and stopping there just like that what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna take that blending brush the 217 and whatever eyeshadow is on and I'm just gonna start buffing it from the outer corner to meet um, the end of my eye here. So it's kind of setting it. It's also moving my eyeliner around a little bit and melting it into place with the residual eyeshadow that is on, on the brush. And imagine how fast this would be if I wasn't even talking. So this is how I managed to get ready um, super fast because this look is so easy. I'm actually going to take a little bit of the eye cool now and I'm just going to do it right on top. I'm not really digging into my false or my eyelash extensions obviously because they would be it would be damaging to them I would imagine. So just kind of going and I'm going about halfway. But I just want it like a little bit deeper. Sometimes I wing it out too. Kind of just depends on my mood here. Again, going in with my brush, just right on top, just back and forth so it melts it into place. Just like so. All right, so my eyes are done. Sometimes I make it a little bit darker, um, but it is like 6.30 in the morning, so I don't need to look super dramatic. Um, I'm gonna prime my face now. I still am using the Super Goop um, Unseen Sunscreen. It's been one of my favorites. It has the SPF 40. Just gonna place this on. I actually did not moisturize um, my face this morning. I just used um, a little bit of toner. So my skin is feeling a little bit dry. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a little bit of a concoction here. So I bought the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation uh, just to play with it a little bit. I'm not familiar with the coloring. And to be honest, I was in Sephora and I was just like swiping um, different shades on my face and then asking my husband's opinion. So the shade that I got at the time was good because I had my self tanner on, which is what my goal was. So right now it's a little bit dark for me. The texture I would say is medium to medium coverage, but it's very velvety. It goes on like butter. I absolutely love this foundation. If I had my shade, I would just be wearing this, but I don't. So I'm gonna mix it with Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Foundation. This is shade five, which is very, very olive. So it kind of counteracts and I feel like um, makes it work. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of both. And you can customize if you're ever mixing foundations, like whatever, you know, whether you need a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, you'd mix more or less of each color. 
Um, I am also going to add a little bit of the uh, Charlotte Tilbury's Wonder Glow. This is technically her primer, I believe. Um, well, I guess it is, but it has um, hyaluronic acid, so it helps like kind of plump up the skin. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that, just about this much. I don't know if you can see too much. And I'm going to mix them all together and just place it on my face. I'm going to use a flat synthetic brush. This is Max uh, 190. So I'm literally just mixing all these guys together. And I'm gonna start kind of in the center of my face. Hopefully my foundation matches today. Although I'm not seeing my mom today, so she won't call me out for my foundation not matching. But that's what mothers are for, right? Okay. Um, I love my mom, by the way. She's the reason why I'm like get ready every day because she inspired me because she had four kids and still managed to look like a total babe. But anyways, um, this is a dual fiber brush for MAC. Sometimes I use my beauty blender, kind of just depends on my mood. But I'm trying to work quick here. So this brush to me is a bit faster. But it's dense. Sometimes I even use um, like a blush brush. A dense blush brush that has like really soft fibers as it really buffs it into the skin all right so I'm just kind of pressing it in here okay I'm gonna take my flat brush and I'm gonna do my brows so I just like to kind of carve them out here on top as well because my brows are definitely not the same, which is pretty normal. And you'll see after I go in with a brow gel and brush up the hair so it kind of breaks up like this super, super defined um, line here. And I like a sporty brow, so I like them to be like super fluffy. This brow's definitely frame the face and they are so so important I think if I could choose one thing that would probably be my lashes that is something I definitely can't live without all right take my brush and it'll get quicker as you um, as you've been doing it for you know more repetitive. I don't even know if it makes sense. So hopefully I do, but anyway. Okay, brows are done. I don't like to put too much um, product on my forehead because I am now getting wrinkles and I'm still breastfeeding full time, so Botox has not happened yet and I can't wait. All right, concealer, under eye concealer. I'm gonna use a, another uh, 224. Again, this is dirty, sorry guys. It's a blending brush for MAC. I'm gonna mix those two concealers together again. And I'm gonna, sometimes I use a little beauty blender that I have too. But this is what I have handy. And I, like I said, don't always have a ton of time in the morning. Actually, most of the time I don't. Which is sometimes why I feel like I'm almost in a makeup rut because like I do the same thing because it's quick and easy or I go through my phases. Um, I don't have too much time to be super creative anymore, but that's okay. Alan is um, so helpful with the kids. He always gives me my time to get ready his thing is the gym, so as long as he has his gym time, he's good. This is like my gym, because if I look good, I feel good, although I probably should start actually working out. But my kid weighs like 21 pounds, so, and the other one, I don't even know how much she weighs, and she likes to be picked up too. So, that's my workout. I'm going to take this little dual fiber brush that I have for MAC, and if it's ever like not, uh, even in the inner corner with my concealer uh, to my eyeshadow. We just kind of brush it up and have it melt and marry into the skin. All 
All right, just like that. Obviously, I look really tired. I went to bed late. Still preparing for Phoenix's birthday. Well, more of like her decorations and stuff or her actual like birthday. We've been celebrating for like over a week now. Kind of crazy. But, you know, you only turn four once, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna set everything um, with my translucent powder from Laura Mercier. This is the glow one. Sorry, I was a little dirty. Um, I really like this. Sometimes I use Charlotte Tilbury's um, uh, powder, sorry. But I feel like today this is what I want to use. So again, focusing on my T-zone and mostly kind of just like setting my under eye. All right, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna highlight. So this I will use my Beauty Blender for because it's easier for me. I'm gonna spray it with my Mario Badescu spray. This is the um, Rose Base Spray. I use different things to highlight, but right now my thing is um, the Beauty Light Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just gonna place a little bit of this on here. Actually, I don't know if it's open. A little bit goes a long way and it comes out pretty quick, so you just gotta be careful. So I'm gonna do it on the high planes of my face. And just like this. I'm actually gonna take a little bit after this um, with a clean 217, the blending brush that I was using the smaller dense blending brush and I'm going to put a little bit of this on the inner corners of my eye. So I'm literally just pressing this stuff in. And this stuff's really nice because um, it stays in place. I've used a lot of other cream highlighters that don't. This stuff like dries down and does not move. So again, I'm pressing it into the skin that way I'm not like moving it around. If you were to be going back and forth, that would completely just like pick up the product and and move it around. I'm gonna use uh, use it on my inner corners now. It literally just makes the biggest difference. Sorry, I'm so boring for you guys today. I was so bummed yesterday's video was a little bit more entertaining because it wasn't as early, but hopefully you guys at least learned something because I know this is a look that you guys have been wanting to see. Okay, contour today is going to be the same thing um, the Charlotte Tilbury's contour wand. This shade is the medium dark. She has two shades. Um, this is the darker of the two. Uh, the brush I'm going to use is Max 130 brush. It's a dense dual fiber brush. You could use any dense brush. I feel like as long as it's, um, you know, works well and is soft. It's the most important thing because if it's really stiff, it'll leave streaks. Um, but what I'm going to do is instead of using it directly on my skin, I'm going to take my brush and press it into here because a lot of times with this stuff, a lot of product comes out and it just can get really messy and it dries very fast. And I am placing this right on top of my cheekbone. So if you were to roll this brush where it would sink in, that's right underneath your bone. Uh, I'm going kind of right on top and a little bit underneath. I don't want to go too low because I want to obviously have that space in between. So it looks like my cheekbones are a bit more chiseled. And I use, I grabbed too much product. So I'm going to start placing it in places where else I would like it. And the jawline here. But it blends nicely, which is good as long as, um, as long as you work quickly. And it's cream, so if you were to have any issues, like if the, I couldn't get to this area in time and it wouldn't blend how I wanted it to, I would just take my Mario Badescu spray and get my Beauty Blender wet and then just start buffing it into the skin. You can see it's like the perfect shade too. It's a little bit warm, but it's not too much and it's not too, um, too gray, if that makes sense. So a lot of times if you're using like a, a light contour. Sometimes it can look a little ashy or a little bit gray. And I'm just going into my hairline and kind of bringing it down. 
That looks a little bit weird with this light. Okay, now it's looking a little bit better. It's actually not that dark. I don't know if it looks this dark um, just from the camera and the light, but you can see it. it just doesn't look crazy. And the contour my nose now with just a little fluffy brush here. This is another uh, 224. And I'm going for my eye socket and just pulling it right down. And if you want the nose to look slimmer, you would bring the darker um, contour closer to the center. You wouldn't do it like super low. That would make the nose look a bit whiter. So if you want it to look slimmer, you just kind of bring it or more defined, I should say. And I go right underneath. Sometimes if you pull it even just right across, it will um, it'll look, your nose will look a little bit more turned up even. It's just like obviously an illusion. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna add a little bit extra for my highlight and I'm gonna be using Max Pigment and this is Blonde's Gold. Um, it's a really pretty champagne color. I think I've only used it once or twice. Sometimes it doesn't work as a highlight for me because it is too, um, too dark. Hopefully it'll work today. So I'm just putting it right, right on top. I'm going to place it right here. See how it's just a little bit extra. And this is the key I feel like to having my makeup stay on, um, throughout the day without having to touch up. Like, I put, you know, a substantial amount on of layering, I should say. Not like, it's not necessarily, amount, it's not like I'm putting a ton of this. It's just a little bit, but it's the fact that I'm like kind of layering it and that my skin is prepped with um, a primer. So I'm gonna, just going to take that eyeshadow brush we were using, the fluffier one, and just so there's no harsh lines, I'm literally just going to do this little like C, if you will. It just kind of buffs it out a little bit. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, well, not the last thing, it's a lie. One of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, this blush called Prism. Sorry, this palette looks really homely here, but this color right here, it's a kind of a neutral pinky brown. And I'm going to use the 168 from MAC. Looks like this. It's an angled one. I just like the fibers on it are super soft. You can use any other blush brush whatever works for you but I just I'm all about like the texture I feel like it, this picks up the product really nicely and I haven't noticed a change in the synthetic fibers but I have both um, of this specific brush and I think it's just fine so I like it on the apples of the cheek right in here and just kind of bringing it back a little bit but focusing more so right here and I do use some on my chin here Now, so I started using the um, Milk, am I okay, Milk, whatever. Um, their brow kush fiber stuff. I don't know exactly what, it, what it's even called. I just started using it. Um, yeah, kush fiber brow. It's amazing. I like the small brush. I like the formula. It doesn't leave them too crunchy. I was really into the Charlotte Tilbury one as well, which is why I bought this. Um, and this is actually the second one that I've had now. I just ran out and bought a new one. Um, but I like the Charlotte one as well. That one has um, castor oil, which helps promote hair growth, but I like both of them because they're very similar as far as um, texture where they um, they don't leave your brows crunchy. They kind of set that, it sets, but it's, it's almost like a pomade where some of them I've noticed are like really intense and they, they're like crunchy after and it's not my favorite. So I'm brushing upward to create that sporty brow and I'm bringing it outward now. I don't know if you guys can see. So the brush is really small, which is nice because you have a lot of control. You could even do, um, and this is a shade lighter than what my natural hair is um, because of obviously the different dimensions. So it's more for blondes, I would say. But um, just like my hair has dimension I want my brows to have dimension but that's just me and you could even do one that matches um, if you have a lot of brow your natural hair color obviously and then um, use that instead of a, a pencil you don't have to always use a pencil even because this guy has color 
so the color payoff will adhere to your your hair and you won't have to fill it in with a pencil kind of just depends but I don't have a lot of hair um, like I said my brows weren't really growing when I was pregnant actually no hair really grows when you're pregnant for me anyways okay mascara this is my tried and true the extended play from Mac I'm obsessed it does not transfer at all and it comes off in tubes with warm water I just use regular face wash because it's way too much but this is a mascara that I have been using forever and I can't seem to let it go so I do this on the bottom I'm like it's really hard for me to even see I need to get a better mirror now that I'm gonna be filming my makeup again um just please look at this unicorn situation. I have balloons all over my table in front of me right now, which you guys can't see. I'm actually like definitely afraid of balloons. So Phoenix, I hope appreciates this when she's older, like legit. If it's like, oh, there's a balloon animal guy. Can we go get a balloon? I'm like, no, we can't. We can't bring it in the car. Like I don't, I'm not into it. It just freaks me out. I don't like, first of all, they smell. And second of all, I don't like the fact that you don't know when they're gonna pop and especially Little kids like to uh, squeeze them. I just can't. We're almost there. Okay, now I'm gonna use, um, I'm just gonna get my little spoolie. It's just a plain spoolie. This is for my um, eyelash extensions. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of my Marnie Badesco spray in there. Get it wet and just kind of comb these bad boys and get any um, eyeshadow that was hanging out off. This is why I have these forehead wrinkles because I look like a psycho when I do my makeup. And I guess all the time apparently. According to my stepdaughter, but that's fine. Okay. Now I'm gonna spray my face with the Mario Badesco spray. I'm gonna go all over. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Okay, that is it for my face. For my lips today, actually the combination that I was gonna wear is in my purse, which I don't wanna go grab right now. So I'm gonna put on another favorite combination. We'll do the iconic nude um, from Charlotte Tilbury. I was actually going to use, I use Strip Down a lot, which is from MAC. It's a very similar in shade. It's a brown. Uh, like a neutral brown. And I'm going to throw on, um, I don't even know what color I'm going to wear today, but... This is basically what I would do any sort of neutral lip pencil and then I don't know exactly what I'm wearing yet. Um, so when I figure that out, it's kind of when I go with lip color, but a lot of times I do, um, my go-to is the Fenty liquid lip color and unbutton. That one's one of my favorites. And I also like Charlotte Tilbury's liquid lipstick and Dolly Bird, I think it is, which is more of like a bubblegum pink. Um, but I like anything that's gonna stay on because I obviously don't wanna have to touch up 24 seven. Um, one of my actually main things about Charlotte Tilbury's lip pencils is they're water resistant. I think it is the claim. I don't know if it's exactly waterproof. Long story short, it stays on forever and it's really, really smooth. So go ahead and get some of those lip pencils. They're the best. Um, and that is all she wrote. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Sorry it took me so long to finally film one and sorry for the crazy background. But um, yeah, hope you guys like it. And here's a little bit of a close up. Oh, I've got like stuff on my face now sick I'm gonna go grab my lipstick for the day okay so I just decided to grab it but here it is this is the Fenty unbuttoned 